Microsoft Exchange allows us to use an external SMTP connector if we want to send email to specific domains to an alternate address other than what the public DNS tells us to do. And that can be very useful if for some reason the public DNS server has outdated or corrupt records for the domain where we want to send email. In my professional life, I've used this many times and this is a great lifesaver in case you can't get email to a customer or to a partner site. So what we want to do is to get to that SMTP connector area by clicking on the admin icon from your Office 365 homepage. And from there, go to the Office Admin Center, and we're going to click on Exchange under the Admin Centers. Once we do that, it takes us to the Connectors page. And you get there by clicking on Mailflow on the left-hand side, as you see here, and Connectors at the top right. So there is no default connector like there is in a regular Microsoft Exchange deployment. And that's because Office 365 does not want you to accidentally delete it or mess it up and cause a problem with Mailflow. However, we can create a new one. So let's go ahead and click the plus and create a brand new one. Now, there are some interesting uh, perspectives as far as which way your email is coming. Is it going out? Is it going in? So in this case, this is email going out to, say, a client server someplace else where we can't get email through because the public DNS is messed up. So what we want to do is we want to click on it's being sent from Office 365, which is exactly where we're coming from, and it's going to be sent to a partner organization. Let's go ahead and choose that and click Next. Now we want to put in what the name of the organization is. So let's just go ahead and put in the uh, techpublishing.com domain. And I'll go ahead and copy that. And we also want to make sure it's turned on once the connector is saved. Go ahead and click Next. Now, what do we want to do with this connector? Well, do we have a transport rule set up? Nope. We want to send email when they're sent to specific domains. So we go ahead and click the plus sign and we'll put in our techpublishing.com domain one more time and click OK and then click Next. Now, do we want to use the MX record associated with the domain? Well, we already know that that particular domain has outdated records out on the public DNS. So that's already set up that way and it's not working. So we want to click to route email through these smart hosts. So go ahead and click plus, and now we'll put in the public IP address uh, or the fully qualified domain name of that smart host. So what is the smart host? Well, the smart host could either be the Exchange email server itself you're sending to, or it could be a spam filter that's maybe at the other person's site. So they also have to set up on their end a receive connector, a receive connector that says, hey, I, it's okay, I'll receive email from this Office 365 location. But you're on the sending side, so uh, all you need to do is set that part up. So go ahead and click Save. And I'm just using this 1111 as an example public IP address. Go ahead and click Next. Now, if you have TLS, Transport Layer Security, then you'll want to have a certificate from a trusted authority. And this helps uh, the receiving end know who it is that's actually sending them email is a trusted person. So you could also have a self-signed certificate as well, or you could just turn it off and click Next. And when we're done, we just go ahead and check our settings and click Next once again. And now we want to test it out. So we'll go ahead and click the plus sign, and we'll just say we want it to go to Administrator at, and then the domain name, and click OK. And when we validate, of course, we're going to get an error because this is a test, <laughs> but it does check this out for you. And if it does validate, it will let you complete it and finish it, and then your connector is done. Let's go ahead and click Stop, just because we know this is not going to validate. And when we're all done, we'll go ahead and click Save. Yes, we do want to save it anyway, even though it was not successfully validated. And so there it is. There is our connector where we can now send email to another domain and tell it which IP address to send it to and to ignore the public DNS setting that is set up. And that's how you do that in Office 365.